I've uh, never heard anybody ever, ever once say anything negative about you. It's cool. always positive things and about what a great guy you are. And a hell of a musician. Jeff. Awesome. Yeah. When did you come to Vancouver? When did I come to Vancouver? I think 1971. Wow. 1971. So I've lived in a lot of places, Vancouver the longest. So okay. I consider myself a Vancouver. Yeah. Um, let's not get what got you into music? Oh, I just love it. Come yeah. on, you're a musician. I know, I know. Love it. Ever, ever, love it. That's right? the starting point. The recorder love it. and yeah. grade three. You know, you know yeah, it? no, just love it. Just uh, Choir. Just, uh, I think I started off, uh, my very first song that I ever learned was Hey Joe, by uh, the Jimi yeah. Hendrix version. Yeah. You know, that got me going. Mm. And then a little bit of Clapton, a little bit of Kinks, and then bang, off I went. Awesome. You know, off I went. How right? old were you? Uh, I started late. I probably oh, yeah. started uh, early 20s, you know, or, or mid mid 20s, right? I was a bit of a, a bit of a delinquent, Link bloomer. Yeah. a little bit a bit of a delinquent as a teenager. No way! Oh, badass, badass. No way! Oh yeah! Hard time believing that. Badass man, badass. I heard something about you being a juggler. Well, that's what I did. You know, that's what I did. I got tired of working. Well, actually, I never worked in my life other than this job. Mm -hmm. But um, I got a grant to go to school. Mm -hmm. So I was going to Langara College, but I didn't want to go to class. So I just hung out in the gymnasium. And in the gymnasium, I had nothing to do. So I just started throwing some things around. Did that for the for the two years when I was supposed to be going to Langara. I graduated with a grade point average of 0.5 mm. because I spent all the time inside the gymnasium learning how to juggle, right? So I finally got to the basics of it. And I got to be so good that people actually paid me to do it. So then I spent the next 10 years traveling all over the world being a, being a street juggler. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. You know, it was pretty cool. And then I got a, and then I got a message from my friend Bob Montgomery, you know, Chuck's, yeah. Chuck's brother and uh, Dimwit's brother. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he wrote me a letter. I think I was in Key West. I think I was in Key West taking it easy, relaxing, you know. Miami. In Miami, yeah, you know, just taking it easy. And he said, hey man, I got this great warehouse, and it was Stalock 13. He said, I got this great, I got this great warehouse, only 750 bucks. I got 50 bucks, send me 700 bucks. So I sent him the 700 bucks, and then I said, well, I better go see what I spent my money on. Came, boogied back to Vancouver, this huge warehouse called Stalock 13, just loved it. Then we started putting on shows, running booze cans, and getting into the whole music thing, right? And then, and then I just gave up on the juggling. I got tired of the traveling, and uh, just full-time music. Cool. What about this Wank Manor? Oh, Wank Manor was Wank Manor. Yeah. Uh, me, Simon Snotface, awesome. Gary Genius, mm -hmm. and Wayne Noy, who's passed away. Yeah. And uh, we all had this house. It was just a little tiny house down on Union Street. Um, on Blood Alley, just up the street from the DOA house, when, mm -hmm. DOA, has li when the DOA guys lived on uh, Gore, mm -hmm. and the Cummins had the Brain Eater house up there too, so we were part of a little, little, little group there. And it was basically a party house, mm -hmm. that was basically a 24-7 party, party, party. Yeah, and I can't remember much more than that about White Manor. And what about this boys club? When we got kicked out of Stalag 13, yes. okay. right? when we got kicked out of Stalag 13, because Stalag 13 was owned by the Beatty Group, who's, who's mm -hmm. a huge, huge, huge investment group, we, uh, we moved around the corner to what was called the Old Phoenix Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when, when we got, uh, 750 bucks again, right? Full gymnasium, uh, the, 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 just, a, just a beautiful little, you know what we had? We had a urinal. One of those urinals, you know, where you mm -hmm. just stand and piss into the trough and it was all tiled and everything. It was pretty cool. Yeah, so then we moved into the boys club and uh, uh, it was a pretty cool place, but we didn't have any gigs there because we didn't want the heat. Mm. What's the name of your first group? The Wankers. Okay. That would be with Paul McKenzie. <clears throat> okay. Who's in town right now, actually. Wow. Yeah, him and the real McKenzie are heading off to do some shows somewhere. So, Yeah, me and Paul McKenzie and Morgan <coughs> Runnings. Paul McKenzie's Paul a character. Paul McKenzie is a character. He is a character. <laughs> You're a character. I'm a character. We're all characters. That's what makes the scene so vibrant and interesting. Yeah. You know, that's why, that's why it works, right? How do you feel about the music business? 
the music business. Yeah. I uh, I know nothing about the music business. <laughs> Neither do I. I know nothing about the music business, nor do I want to know anything about the music business. I do want one of your shirts though. The Satan Bacon and Beer shirts. Oh, I love Didn't it. Didn't I get you one? No. No, what size do you take? Large. Large, I got one for you. Thanks. I, I didn't even ask. I didn't have the heart to. It's just 20 bucks a shirt. No, no, no. You, you just ask, man. You know, like, uh, for me, it's not about the money. You yeah. know, I mean, if somebody's prepared to pay 20 bucks, great. If somebody's pre prepared to pay 15 bucks, great. You know, uh, it, it's not about the money. I, it, I don't make any money in music. We, we play because we love it. Yeah, we don't make money playing music. We're making you know? history here. Someone's yeah, that's it. Be... No, no, no. That's a good way to look at it. We're making history, right? I yeah. saw Bloody Bottom Bout. That's a document. Yeah. Yeah. And not many people in that film were millionaires. No, no, no. <laughs> it wasn't Kathy and Regis, believe no, me. No, But I no. kind of like that show more. I yeah. like Bloody Bottom Bow more, more character. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of characters in there, right? So, uh, all friends of mine. I don't know where I was when, that, when, when all that was going on. I think I must have been... I took 23 years off to raise a kid, right? So <laughs> That's what we're going to get into next. Yeah. You're you know. a dad, family man. Oh, not anymore. That's why I'm back now, right? Yeah. You know, but for 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 twenty some odd years, we were just um, myself and my wife Nancy just raising our daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, just being responsible parents. Because mm. I come from a fucked up background, Nancy comes from a fucked up background, so we just decided that we weren't going to subject our kids mm. to that fucked up background. How many right? kids do you have? Just the one. Oh, that's right. enough. You know, that's enough. Right? Your daughter. Yeah, my daughter Liza. Oh, yeah, she's, she's this beautiful, beautiful girl at the gig. Oh my God, that's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go, you know, and then and then what? Uh, the wankers, and then uh, a shitload of, of fuck bands, just a shitload of fuck bands. I met you when you sang for the Stoolies. The Stoolies, yeah, which later which later turned into uh, the Liquor, Liquor Kings. Kings. Yeah, yeah. The reason we went from the Stoolies to the Liquor Kings was because we did the first CD, right? We, we, we did the debut CD, 100 Proof Rock and Roll, mm -hmm. and we didn't want the name Stoolies on that CD because of the shit reference yes. of Stoolies, a stool, yes. right? Yeah. And once it's on the CD, it's, that's it. That's the name of the band. You can't, exactly. you can't change it then. So before the CD came out, we decided to change the name to Liquor Kings, Kings you know. And uh, we're glad we did. The name suits us well. It does. The, the, the name suits you us. You guys well. seem a lot happier with that name. I think we are, and I think that uh, because, and again, because of the shit reference. Yeah. You know, a lot of people would say to us, "Ooh, you know, I mean, you guys, you know, I mean, that's a shitty name." Yeah. Well, Stoolies also not just the uh, defecation reference, um, or feces, fecal reference. Yeah. Um, it's also a rat. Yeah, and 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 that's kind of like how we meant it, because we like like the the idea we had was we're gonna rat out on rock and roll. We're gonna tell everybody about rock and roll. There's no secrets here. Rock and roll is fun. Rock and roll is supposed to be loud and, and obnoxious, and obnoxious and fun, and and we're gonna rat out on that. So the idea was the Stoolies, because we're ratting out on mm -hmm. rock and roll. But then once we started calling ourselves the Stoolies, then people started saying, yeah, but what about the shit reference? You know, so. <laughs> So, like I said, when the CD came out, we changed the name. Liquor King sounds more positive. It does, it You're does. Happy. Yeah, yeah. And, and the and, Satan bacon and beer shirt, that's a killer shirt. And it's all tongue-in-cheek. You yes. know, the whole thing is tongue-in-cheek. You know, I mean, not that we're Satanists, but you know what? I mean, we're not good-hearted Christians either. You know, yeah. to each his own, you know. To but each what a own. reference, Satan, bacon. <laughs> What's the bacon <laughs> reference for? What, anti-Islamic or anti-Semitic? Well, it's pork. Yeah, I it's know. It's pork, right? It's pork. And I mean, and then there's the poetic value of it. Okay. Satan, bacon, and beer. Yeah. You know, it just I rolls it. off the tongue nicely, right? And we got some cool shirts, too. Some cool Satan, bacon, and beer shirts. Exactly. Yes. Um, and then Fabulous Wallies, that's your super group. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's the cover group. Right. An assembly of friends. Yes, uh, uh, some some fabulous players. Uh, you know, like like the, it, it, it's always nice to surround yourself, as you know, mm. with uh, with with good, competent uh, uh, players that are a lot of fun to uh, to jam around with. Right. So Randy Carpenter, Bob Bodine. We had Scott McCloud on for a while, and of course we had JT drumming for a while, and Eric Lowe drumming. And I mean, it's just. It, 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 it's just incredible the talent in Vancouver as far as musicians go, and to be able to draw on that talent, just just love it, just love I it. I think the talent is one story, but the camaraderie. We're yes. starting to be buddies. Yes. Because I've been in situations where everyone hated each other, yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, supporting yeah. each other, and that's yeah. no scene. 
You know, you know what gets me about that, and I know exactly what you're talking about, is the jealousy. Yeah. The jealousy of somebody else's success, you know, like, 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 and, and, I, and I don't like that. I want to see Little Guitar Army just go as far as humanly possible, because what's good for Little Guitar Army is good for the Liquor King. Exactly. You know, what's good for you guys is good for us. What's good for us is good for you guys. Absolutely. It's a scene, right? And if one, and, and, and so this jealousy thing that some musicians have towards other successful musicians is, is a very negative. I enjoy yeah. attending your gigs. Well, I enjoy attending your gigs. <laughs> I remember we played together at the Princeton. I met you for the first time. Well, that was a long time ago. Yeah, two Good years, solid year. Three years ago. Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. And I ago. thought, who is this guy? And yeah. I, I'm glad I know you. Yeah, no, and I'm very glad to know you too, Sonny. Um, you know, and, and all the best to you in your uh, musical endeavors, right? Yeah. You can, do you have a sponsorship with guitars or strings or anything? Um, guitars, but not strings yet. Not strings yet. Yes. Yeah. My brother has a line of guitars. And oh, okay. Else. And in Little Guitar Army... What's the name of the guitars? C.R. Dean. C.R. Dean. My last name's Dean. My oh, brother's perfect. initials is C.R. Oh, cool. So I'm happy. I have four of his guitars nice. and one bass. Yeah, nice. Modeled after Gibson Les Paul. Nice. Do you guys have stickers or anything that I can stick on my stuff? Uh, no, I'll oh, talk okay. to my brother yeah, about that. Yeah, let's get some stickers. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah sorry, Our know. competitor, I guess, is it's similar to Sparrow guitars. Oh, okay, yeah. They're made in China. Yeah. Um, Yours or the Sparrows? Both. Both, okay. <laughs> Except Sparrow reassembles the guitars here. Over here. Yeah, so they get, the, they get a little bit of Canadian plug in there. Yeah, whereas... Yeah. Us, well, I have Paul Iverson reading my guitars. Oh, nice. And Paul, he is the luthier. Yeah. And he works out of Tom Lee nice. in North Van. Oh, nice. Great friend, great musician, great yeah. luthier. Yeah, good. Good. It's always nice to have people that have skills like that that we can use. Mm. Yeah. So Arnie is, do you do anything other than sing? Oh, yeah, I do it all. I play bass. I just joined, uh, I just joined a band called Rustic Sinners. I, I, I have a bit of a country heart. Wow. You know, I have a bit of a country heart. I, I like country music. I like the old classical countries, you know, Hank, mm -hmm. Hank Williams, George Jones, those guys. Um, so I have a bit of a country thing. And I used to play in a band called uh, Chainsaw Running, which was a country band. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the first punk cow, cow punk bands mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Um, and so, uh, you know, and, and it's a quiet band. I play in a very loud, Liquor Kings is a very loud band. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to be able to play in a quiet band too. You know, I play bass with them. I drum, I play keyboards, I play guitar, you know. So you, just like yourself, you pick it all up sooner or later, right? You know, you pick it all up. So, and I'm looking for a drumming gig, so anybody needs a drummer? He's anybody a needs a drummer? <laughs> you know? Uh, where have you lived outside of here? You came to Vancouver from out of the sky. Uh, well, no, I um, I was born in Holland, right? Okay. Hans Touchman. I was I was born uh, born in Holland. Uh, I moved to Toronto when I was seven. Mm. Ran away from home when I was thirteen. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was a bit of a badass as a kid. <coughs> Ran away to Vancouver, but I was just a little too young. Thirteen, mm -hmm. I was just a little too young to be living on the streets in Vancouver. But that was like back in the '60s, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it was it was quite a place. It the hippie quite, era. Yes. Oh, it made quite an impression on me, right? You know. So then um, I was forced to go back to Toronto, and then I, when I was 16, I came out to uh, Vancouver for good. Never went back. Oh. So a few years. Born in Holland. Few years in Toronto, and then um, and then uh, I immigrated to Vancouver. Love it here. Love it here. Right. What was the hippie scene like? Oh, it was insane. Really. It was insane. It's like everybody was walking around going, hey, man, you got a place where I can crash? Hey, man, you got a place where I can crash? <laughs> like nobody lived anywhere. Mm -hmm. Nobody freaking well lived anywhere. Weren't there any squats or anything? Uh, yes, there were squats. Uh, George's Street was different. There was houses on George's Street back then, right? Wow. And everybody was squatting in the basements of, the George, uh, of houses on George's Street. Hence the um, party houses. Yes. Yeah. Fort yeah. Gore and God knows yeah. what else. All those other ones. Yeah, there was a million of those places. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's basically. And then when I got to Vancouver, that's it. I just loved it here. I mean, I, I still do. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll probably spend the rest of my life here. It's a breeding ground for nurturing personal creativity. I think so. I mean, I like I said, I spent some time in Toronto. Well, we both know what a shithole Toronto is, yeah. right? I, I mean, lived there for a bit. yeah, you know, everything's concrete, and and people are concrete. Everything is concrete. The mentality is concrete, and uh, it just for me there was just nothing there at all. There was just nothing there at all. 
I'm from the coast. I'm from the east coast, from PEI. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's the water. Well, maybe same with me. Well, same ocean. with me, right? I come from I come from Holland. I was yes. born in an area called Scheveningen, which is a little community right on the Black Sea. Yeah. So I mean, I grew up on the beach. Mm-hmm. Right? I grew up on the beach, and when I got to Toronto, I just kind of noticed all the concrete. <laughs> what? Holy fuck! What's all this about, right? And then when I came back to Van- when I moved to Vancouver, I said, Holy shit! There's the beach again, Mom. Yes. I'm, I'm home, right? Sometimes it's geography, which yes. you're familiar with. Yes. No disrespect to Toronto, it just... No, I it wasn't my place. It wasn't my place, yeah. man. And a lot of people are there, you know, and they like it, and that's great for them. Mm. You know, that's great for them, you know? Hey, thank you for your time, Ronnie. Sonny, my pleasure, We had a man. wonderful time. My pleasure. Hi to Ron, Frank working the camera. Thanks a lot. We did a song for you the other night, the Occupy song, Head Above the Water. Got to keep my head above the water. That was for the Occupy guys. Hey? Yep. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, for the interview. Take care. Okay. Take care. Have a great day.